I'm John. I'm going to walk through the bike and gear I use for the Hurricane 300. This year it was a 392 mile race. Finished it yesterday morning. And here's the bike. Uh, still got everything on it. This is a Rebel El Jefe, size large. Um, start here at the back. This is a tail fin bag. Got two straps. One strap got tangled up, so I actually had to cut it during the race. Could have been a lot worse. Um, actually used, thankfully had this little baby blue knife with scissors on it, so I was able to cut the strap out, but still has the one strap. And in this gear bag, I originally kept my sleeping gear in here, but halfway through the race, I put all that up front and kept clothing in the back so I have this is my main insulating layer and a lightened equipment uh, puffy that worked out great synthetic and in this Dyneema dry bag I had a pair of uh, down pants these are mountain hardware it got the lows each night were around 42 43 so it was good to have these setting up camp. And then uh, I slept in them the first night and the rest of the nights I did not need them. So good having though when you're stopped setting up. A pair of uh, sleeping socks, darn tough wool socks. And then I had, I would change into uh, this Ibex uh, wool, 100% wool long sleeve shirt to sleep in. And then I had a pair of Ibex uh, wool boxers. I slept in those. This is my rain shell. This is an Arcteryx. Can't remember which one it is. Beta, it's the uh, Gore-Tex Pro. So it's, it's one of the higher end models, but it has a nice big hood that can fit uh, climbing helmets and bike helmets. So uh, we did get a good bit of rain day two going through the green swamp. So it was really key to have this jacket with the Hood that goes over the helmet. I really like the pit zips. I think a lot of cycling jackets do not have those, but I think it's um, a necessary feature of a jacket to have the pit zips when you're cycling. And so this was essentially my rain shell uh, and wind shell if needed. I did carry a separate wind shell. Um, it's like I've got some. I would also carry some food my extra food that I needed in here to resupplies. This is an entire English muffin with bacon, egg, and cheese that I did not eat. Some Fritos and some beef jerky. So, didn't get around to needing those. This was my, uh, this is a Z-Pack 7x9 tarp, Dyneema tarp, very light. I didn't need it until the last night. It was kind of misting. It wasn't really raining, but I set it up just in case. To, and it was super windy, so primarily used it as a as a windshield last night. But this is, I think this is comes in around six ounces, so it's it's a very light option. These were my riding socks, also darn tough. So I carried a thicker pair of sleeping socks, and then I carried two pairs of riding socks. These are the I think it's the micro wool. So I, I would I switched, I think halfway through, I wore my other pair that are black. So I've gone through a lot of different kinds of socks. I've used Darn Tough, you know, from my backpacking days um, 15 years ago all the way until now. So really like the Darn Tough socks. These are just some small little dining in the bags. I kept my down or my synthetic jacket in this bag. This is for my tent or my tarp stakes that I need to put back in there. I couldn't find the bag, so I had to throw in my stakes and that was this lock. Carry four stakes. This was a buff that I used um, some the first day. Honestly, I thought I'd use it more. I think it got, it got really wet during the rain the second morning and it just never fully dried out, so I didn't use it, but I generally think that it's still a good piece of kit. I mean, particularly if it's Older and you need to have everything kind of covered up. But this is a uh, free fly bamboo blend buff. 
This was a sock that I found on the trail. I was hoping to reunite it with its owner, but I never did, so I've got one extra sock. These, uh, these were awesome to have. These are knee warmers from, I think it's Defeat. So these are 100% wool knee warmers, and I used these the second night, or I pushed through till about 1.30 in the morning. And honestly, I would have used them the third day too, but I couldn't find them at the time. I was feeling too lazy to try to dig for them, but I would keep these more handy and I really enjoyed having these knee warmers. Uh, threw my headlamp in here. Um, definitely made sure to lock it so it doesn't turn on automatically in the bag. This is a Phoenix HM65R. I chose to have it as you can see here on my helmet, I have some Velcro and I, I could have slapped it on there, but I chose to have it um, the straps on over my head and then put the helmet on. Um, that way it's just lighter and I'm not having to, to deal with it on my helmet. Um, and it, it, it doesn't, when you have it like this, it doesn't pull that helmet down over your eyes and it just gets really annoying. So I prefer it like this. This thing kind of came undone, so I had to sort of tie it in a knot, but yeah, this was good because you'd like to scan around when you're on the bike and if you have the light just on the bike, you can't do that or when you're looking down in your gear, so important to have a separate headlight. This was a little bag I brought with me as like emergency fuel in case I needed to. I kept, uh, right now there's two goos in here. I think I had one or two more things probably somewhere, but I did dip into this some, but uh, I never ran out of food, so. Spare bag, and then two other small stuff sacks, which this one was for my gloves, and uh, that's for the tarp, actually. This goes into the, tarp goes into that bag. And that's it for this, for this rear bag. So, highly recommend tail fin stuff. Um, it's really good and they know it because they charge for it. But anyway, um, let's see. This is a, I found, the, I don't know if you can find these anymore, but I found this exposure blaze light. This was good. I charged it a little bit the second night, but it pretty much ran the whole uh, three and a half days without needing a recharge. And that was important to have on the, on the roads. This is an Ergon saddle, Ergon uh, SM, SMC core. No problems at all. This is a big lock bottle that it's kind of cool. I don't know if I'll use it long term or not. It's sort of a, a, a niche product where you got to have all the ecosystem in play, but I really like having this bottle on the top tube here because it's just easy to get. I kept all my electrolyte water in that bottle. Um, this I switched to these. These are uh, Pedaling Innovations flat pedals. Switched to those a couple weeks before the event. I trained on flat pedals for about a month before the race. I had trained on um, Cliffless. I had some Shimano ST pedals on there, but I was getting some pressure points, so I switched back to flat, and I'm glad I did. I really like having these and uh, getting that center uh, push on the pedal also allows you to uh, just change your foot position. There's just a few spots on some of the more aggressive single track that it would have been nice to have uh, the clipless, but otherwise really happy with that choice. I think covering that kind of distance, it's nice to have uh, flat pedals because the shoes are more comfortable. Uh, helmet, this is a POC helmet. No problems at all with this helmet, comfortable. This is another tail fin top tube bag. So I would keep here, I had a, a 20,000 milliamp battery pack, which was good to have, night core. I did uh, fully recharge this the second night. I stayed in a motel. So I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go with anything less than 20,000. Uh, I have a 10,000 that I didn't bring, but I'm glad I brought this, this bigger one. So basically I would, keep this, I would charge this when I could and then use this to charge all my devices on the bike. So I would use this and I've got all my cables and other charging things in here. 
and I'll keep a little bit of food in here too on the side. And I've got two feed bags here. This one on the left, I've got a apple pie, empty little Debbie apple pie. I mean, these things are gold, 440 calories, 30 grams of sugar, 66, 66 grams of carbs in this little thing. Um, I'll buy more of these next time for sure at resupplies. But in this side, uh, I think two of the days I actually kept a full Coca-Cola bottle in this side and just sort of nipped from that all day long. Um, and I've got some instant coffee that I totally forgot about here on the side that I didn't even use. Um, and then this bag, which is a Revlate feed bag, I would keep all my food. So this is a this was found the morning of day uh, day four, unopened on the trail. So that was a little accident on the trail magic by a rider ahead of me. So that was nice. And then yeah, kept all my food in here. So these are some gummies, a little waffle. Hey. Uh, goo. This is a combos trash. That's all. I would, and I kept some chapstick here on the left. And I would stuff all my trash in the front pocket here, which is all in there. So, all right. This is a Garmin InReach Mini. That's what I use to track on track leaders. The frame back is a dispersed bike packing custom frame bag. This is made out of Ultra 200, I believe. It's the lightest option. I love this bag. This is an incredible product. So on the non-drive side, I guess, this is where I kept sort of all my little knickknacks. I've got here a, uh, my printed out key sheet and a plastic bag. I didn't check this as much as I thought, but it was good to have. I did check it some. I think the process is going through and getting all the information to create this, and then you have that in your head, and that's the more beneficial part. So I think once you get to the point of having this kind of notes, you don't need to check it as much as you think. So that's the cue sheet. This was my um, ombres sunglasses case. The ombres I wore, no complaints with those at all. Those are probably my favorite riding glasses because you have the cable, the, or the rope that goes around instead of the hard um, temple things. And uh, you can take it off and leave them dangling when you're cycling. And I really like them. And so when I was riding during the day, I would put my eyeglasses that I wore at night for, for seeing distance uh, in here during the day and I would swip, switch them around day and night. So. That was that case. This is the pump that I carried that I didn't need at all. This is a Topeak pump that can pump the uh, fork or the tires. A little bit of duct tape on that. And this is sort of my, inside here there are two little, the little pockets that are very convenient. In this top one I kept my go-to toolkit stuff. So kept my Crank Brothers multi-tool a little wolf tooth chain lube, which I used a couple times. This was a tire plug kit from uh, Dynaplug, and didn't need this. And this was nice to have. This is actually an MSR um, backpacking, I think, pot cleaner. And so, you know, if, if you had some thick mud stuff, you can use the hard side, but I would use this brush. And I think once a day, I would kind of brush down my, my chain and, and all along here and so that was really cool to have and uh, very useful I definitely would bring all of this stuff again um, use the multi-tool a few times to tighten down a few things so that was all in this top pocket and in this back pocket I kept this is a trial with toilet paper and then this was sort of my hygiene kit um, get salty britches so this was my chafing ointment that I would apply uh, once a day. Probably should have done it twice a day, but once a day and that did okay. And then at night, I would wipe down with some of these wet wipes in, in, in the nether regions. And then I would apply some of this uh, Aquaphor uh, for dry, cracked, irritated skin. So 
essentially while you're sleeping, this is rejuvenating those chafed areas. And then when you wake up, you reapply some of the salty britches. And that was a very good little kit to maintain your saddle. I didn't have, I mean, I've got some expected chafing and, and it definitely started to hurt down there after three and a half days, but no uh, real issues. So that was important to have. I actually never use this. I thought I would use this more. This is some uh, Arnicare that was recommended by a nurse practitioner for pain relief. Um, I probably could have used this down there and made my life a little bit easier. Also, I was getting some pretty bad trap pains from a pulled trap muscle from doing a deadlift too heavy a few years ago that has not gone away. So I probably should have applied this, but honestly, when you're out there, you just aren't attentive to those these details as we probably should be, but that's a pain gel. And then this, and this down the bottom, this actually bag is so old that from backpacking that it's disintegrated, but this has my sunscreen and a little tube, which I did use every day. And it's got some soap, toothpaste, some, it's basically my first aid kit, some bandages, and uh, took some took a couple of ibuprofen every night before I went to sleep. And that's all for that side. The other side has got a where I kept my bladder. So this is a two liter bladder from Hydropack. This was recommended to me from uh, from Andrew at Disperse Bikepacking. Says I really like these bags and this is, it was perfect. Uh, no issues at all. There's a hose port at the top of this bag and then so my hose runs up here and I've got this little magnetic thing clipped onto my uh, tail fin bag. So that was, that ran perfectly. And so that left me some space in here where I would also keep the very bottom. I kept my more emergency more emergent type toolkit stuff and I actually never opened this bag at all the entire trip but you know if you if you if you do this kind of stuff you know what sh should be in here if you're just getting into it you'll do some research but you know spare tube tire levers some stands a sealant I've got a derailleur hanger I did bring a uh, co2 there's a chain tool. So all the kind of essentials, it's kind of heavy. So I stuck that down at the bottom. And then I would be able to carry some spare food, some Pop-Tarts, stuff its way down there that I didn't need. need. Um, this is a uh, Catadine B-free filter. I didn't need this at all. Didn't know. And then I actually have a spare battery for these lights, which I didn't need to use either. So a lot of stuff I didn't need, but better be prepared. You start dialing it in, the more experience you get. So that's all from up to here. I carry a bottle down here. This was really kind of more of like an emergency bottle um, with the two liters. And then this is, I think, uh, I think this is almost 800 milliliters. It carries more than it looks. Um, that was enough. I probably didn't need this at all. So. You know, you can do the math. My capacity was almost three liters. Um, I think that's probably a good amount for this ride. And then moving over here, I have a uh, Garmin navigation device. I forget which model. I think it's the 5, 540 or 840. But that didn't give me, I mean, this actually, I was gonna say, it didn't give me problems. It actually did cause me some problems because I was not able to have the whole route in one continuous recording. For some reason it like froze, so then I had to save it and restart my ride. So each day was a separate ride, because that was a little frustrating, but otherwise it uh, did its job. I had my phone up here on a um, quad lock, I believe, mount, which I really liked. Um, here for my lighting, I had two of these Phoenix BC26R lights. So these are awesome lights they get super bright and just after doing some research I realized that I think I would like to have two of these so I had one on each side 
that let me run each of them in a little bit lower light versus having one that I had to run at a higher lumens output. So I would definitely run two of those again. So those two is mostly what I is what I use riding and my headlamp I kept off. You could probably do one of these with the headlamp, but um, I like having two. This is uh, these are the quick release error bars from Redshift. And I've got them mounted to a Fred bar, I believe it's called, to get that up a little bit higher. For this route, I really like having the error bars. Um, there are enough sections of flat areas where you can really kind of get down and grind away and up your speed, and it really helped change hand positions. I didn't have any, I don't have any hand numbness or damage at all, so having those was important. Here in the front, this is a um, Revelate harness here they you know these had been sold out for a while and they re-released some so I think you can find these again but I really like this harness it's just a light lightweight option for your bike and this is a I can't think of the company but anyway it's a it's the same material that my frame bags made out of and this is a custom, I had sewn this bag myself, a custom bag that I made for the front. There's a little light load towel that I didn't really need, but a little bag here in the front that kept a decent bit of stuff. So in here, I would keep my gloves. I would keep uh, my wind layer. I kept food in here sometimes, just anything you need quick access to. So that was awesome. I really liked this system. It just kind of wraps around this bag. And uh, yeah, I really like this handlebar system. In here, like I said, I started off keeping all the stuff, that most of the clothing and stuff you see, I was this was all in this bag. But then I switched because I found that getting in and out of this bag during the day wasn't as easy as that one. So I switched over to putting all my sleep stuff in here. So this is a Bora, Bora Gear Bivy. It's a Cuban Bivy. Got the Cuban bottom and then the top. There's a lighter sill nylon. And it's got the, the bug net head on the top. So in here, I just basically, it's sort of my bedroll. So this is a Nemo tensor pad and then a little uh, air pillow. Uh, I think this is Trekology. You can find these free cheap on Amazon. I was losing air on this on the third night which is aggravating and I'm not sure what's going on with that so probably would replace that because otherwise that's the sleep sleeping system which I only needed that like I said first night I slept in that with no, uh, no tarp second night was a motel third night I did bust out the tarp but I like having the bivy um, I think I would maybe do a small one person tent going forward depending on the conditions. It's just when you're out, for me personally, when you're out in the elements all day and you're basically getting blasted with wind all day, it's nice to, I think it'd be nice to get completely out of the wind and get into like a little more private space. You know, you can change in there. You're not having to change standing up outside your bivy. So I think it's a little bit more suitable for my preferences, but I will use the bivy again. It's a, definitely a super quick option to, to set up when you're tired and that's it for this guy other than this which is my down quilt in a mountain laurel designs stuff sack which is that's what this bag is mountain laurel designs so this is a sole hammock gear 20 degree burrow quilt i've had for years um, that i really like so no problems with that at all i love the quilt and that's everything. This is a RockShox 120 SID fork up front. I was running 2.4 Maxxis Recons front and rear. And I believe that's all. Um, I do have the uh, silicone Mega Fat Paw Grips. I can't remember who makes those off the top of my head. Maybe it's Cane Creek, I can't remember, but in these Cane Creek bar ends. So it's good to get here. I really spent a lot of time here on these ends. That was very comfortable climbing. 
uh, and, and taking a break. And then, uh, yeah, so anyway, that's everything. Um, actually, let me show you what I wrote in. I forgot these, these are my rain pants, which I did use one, one morning, it was good to have these. Um, these were my lighter riding gloves. Jiro uh, or Euro riding gloves. These are my other pair of riding socks. And these are my warmer gloves. I can't find the other one right now, but this is 45 North Hoken, I believe, is the glove. So they're really comfortable, and I really like the warmth. Uh, like I said, it was in the 40s, and these were warm enough. But this is really tight right here. It's stretchy, but that's super aggravating to get your hand in there when your hands are cold and maybe it's a little wet. So I don't know about these gloves long term. They're just too hard to get off and on, but anyway, otherwise good gloves. And this is a uh, Patagonia Houdini wind, wind jacket. It's very light and it was also good to have. I bought a lot of layers. You know, it's not too much of a weight penalty and I think it's good to have the versatility. And where I was riding in was these Bibs here, these are Anion, or sorry, Albion bibs. So I love these bibs because they have these side cargo pockets, and uh, I use those to stuff in some snacks. And I never used it, but it's got this cool pocket in the back, if you're lumbar region. I probably would have used it if I had remembered to use it, honestly. That would have been good for a windshell. But I love these bibs. So socks, bibs, then I will have on, this is a short sleeve version of a wool Ibex shirt. So I would have this on first, and then on top of that, I would have this Ibex 100% wool, essentially quarter zip hoodie. And uh, a lot of times I would just have this on. So if it was, it was starting to warm up in the afternoon and it was sunny, I would wear just this up top because it would block my arms and everything from the sun. And then as it cooled down, I would throw on the yellow shirt underneath this. And it, when it was getting really cold late at night, I would put this hood on over and, and zip it up and that would cover my ears and protect my ears. So I really like having the hooded shirt to, to ride in because you don't have to carry a separate hat or things to cover your ears. You just flip the hood over. And this, I mean, it doesn't smell at all. You know, the more I do this backpacking and now getting into bikepacking stuff, to me, natural fibers just can't be beat. We can't beat um, creation and the intelligent design that has that made this stuff, that produces this wool. And so I think it's the way to go. Uh, synthetics just smell too bad and uh, don't do as good of a job. So. Very happy with that. And then down at the feet, I've got these Gore-Tex Shimano GF8s, I believe. And uh, love these shoes. These are absolutely perfect. They've got the BOA system. I feel like they fit like a glove, but then you've got the wide toe box. You know, with the conditions they were, with it, with they were from the 40s up until 69 or the high of 70, these were absolutely perfect. No complaints at all absolutely would recommend these and uh you know they gave me plenty of grip and all the hike a bike type sections that we had and, and some of the trails and so yeah no complaints that's everything i carried with me for 392 miles on the hurricane it was a great adventure i hope this helped if you're planning to do, to do this route or a similar route and uh if you have any questions drop them in the comments below cheers